Happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades as a craftsperson and an entrepreneur to answer any of your questions. So today, uh, it's uh, it's just after Christmas. Uh, every Friday, this show goes live. I've never missed a week in, uh, in over three years. So here I am, and uh, it's this time of the year that I normally focus on some quick winter sprayer maintenance. Any questions you guys have, any topic, any question listed below, uh, I'm going to walk through how I quickly maintain a lot of my sprayers. This is sort of damage control stuff, uh, mid-season sort of breakdowns, things like this, uh, taking a look, maintenance. Uh, and then uh, we'll get to the PCA contractor question of the week, which is, what are you prepping for spring? And it is not too early to prep for spring because uh, in December, I took an entire retreat week uh, to plan for 2020 and in the course of doing that you obviously plan for spring so right now is not too early to start thinking about spring uh, number one um, you have to start thinking about your you know up in here in minnesota in the upper midwest we basically have six months inside six months outside and uh, we basically plan our year around that come about may 1st give or take is when we really hit the ground running outside so for me you don't really have to do a lot of marketing thinking May in Minnesota just happens, and if you are a contractor and you have an either an email address or a phone number, somebody will contact you for work. You don't need to push it, uh, at least at the volume we're doing now. We're 380, 390 jobs a year, give or take. We don't need to push a lot of marketing in spring. I market for right now. So that being said, you have to be ready for the onslaught of the amazing amount of work that's gonna happen. Uh, especially here in Minnesota, everybody wants everything done in May and you have to be ready. So we're staffing up right now. We're spending the next six months making sure we're onboarding, recruiting, training, uh, getting people through the apprenticeship program now so that come May 1st, we are ready to hit that ground running and go because it's tough to recruit for those three or four months during the middle of summer because you need to be doing all your work and you know your college and your uh, college kids, uh, teachers, things like that. They're only gonna come in for about eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks if you're lucky. And uh, you gotta start making those uh, recruitment strategies now, start getting those people on. So what am I doing? Sorry, phone call. Uh, one of those things that we have to make sure is number one, get your staff ready. Number two, SOP, standard operating procedures. So last year, we completely redid our exterior SOPs, standard house painting, deck staining, deck restoration, things like that, um, wood entry door restoration, codified it, we got videos, we got training, we learned a lot from it, new products, new systems and everything. Uh, we're gonna tweak those just slightly. We had really good results last year. So we're already starting to shore those things up. And thank you guys for all the comments and questions. I'll be getting down to those uh, just in a second here. So number one, staffing, number two, SOPs, and number three, when the busy season comes, you don't really wanna be implementing, testing out anything. So basically, between now and maybe late April, I really wanna shore up the year so that we can just act and do and execute when we're out there. So no, it is not too early to start prepping for spring. So before I talk about some quick sprayer maintenance, uh, let's go through some questions, comments, see what, uh, see what everybody's up to. So happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Sebastian, thanks for watching. Oh, Meryl, thanks for watching. Armando, uh, just getting ready to spray some advance. All right, Sebastian, that sounds good, man. Matthew Chamberlain, Jim Callahan, uh, past apprentice, friend of mine, friend of the show. Sebastian's still using my seven-year-old Graco 395 Nova. So, interestingly enough, I love this sprayer very dearly. We probably should have trashed it years ago, but uh, it's somewhere between 16 and 20 years old. It is a Graco 395 STS. It's electric sprayer. It has right on the front, so that, that tells you how, uh, how interesting that was at that time. Um, but I bought this uh, from a retired wallpaper slash craftsman in the cities and he took great dear care of it and uh, I did too for a while we handed off to the apprentices this is basically our oil primer sprayer we use one one product through this thing so there's really never a weird cleaning thing but as you can tell uh, I'm a 27 year old uh, year veteran of this of this craft uh, when you give it to somebody who's got only a few months of experience they will try to clean these they don't clean them very well so what I love about all the Titans and the Graco's is that you can do some pretty sinful pretty horrible things to these things and in the end if you just take them apart kind of clean them put them back together replace maybe a hose here or there everything goes back to normal and it works well once uh, for every three or four or five of those sort of things which I did right here you might have to get it repacked oh well a couple hundred bucks we got a great awesome uh, sprayer maintenance place up in the cities here we take them to and it's just awesome so it is what it is again uh, in a perfect world um, when I use my pumps I've used pumps for as long as 10 or 12 years with basic cleaning and no repacking um, and that's sort of just the way it goes. So, oh, Toots is watching with the kids. Uh, 
Suzanne Hudson, I'm still using my Graco 15 years old. <laughs> Before they were called Nova, absolutely, yeah. There was a, there's a lot of good pumps here. I still have, uh, interestingly enough, I should probably put these on a shelf somewhere, but this thing's somewhere between 16 and 20 years old. I bought for 75 bucks, 100 bucks from a retired craftsperson. We have another garage sale Graco, which is a very unique one. I forget the name of it, but I've not seen another one like it. Uh, I actually have my father's Titan, super old Titan, um, Titan Impact. I want to say it's a 400 or a 440, but that thing's probably between 16 and 20 years old. And I took that thing out of the garage. It was frozen. It had thinner in it for 10 or 15 years. I took it out, got the old thinner out, new thinner in, and it worked perfectly. So uh, we keep using that thing. And then uh, what other cool one do we have? Oh, there was there was another one that we have too, but a whole bunch of those weird pumps that we have that I really like. So uh, Sebastian's still on the same filters. Yes. So the kindest thing you can ever do to an aerial sprayer is just clean it. It's, it's amazing how well these things work, how long they work, if you just clean paint and stuff out of them uh, so you don't have to later. So, uh, first time spraying in advance. Hey, Sebastian, post some pictures and some videos. Let us know, man. Um, George, how often do you replace the filters or do you just clean them? Okay, perfect world. As craftspeople, we clean them and we put them in there and they go again. It's fine. Uh, if, you, if you keep taking them in and out, maybe the metal ones, uh, some of the smaller fine mesh plastic ones every couple years if you do it well. But honestly, in my company, we got a whole bunch of young people learning. They don't exactly clean the sprayers up well. We knew that getting into it. So maybe once or twice a year, we just have to get in there, clean these suckers out, replace the filters, and move on. Cost of doing business, and it's a, it's a learning company. So Holly, thanks for watching. Sebastian, uh, seven gets the same filters. <laughs> seven years old. Eric Douglas, thanks for watching, man. Joel Hamburg, friend of mine, friend of the show. So, all right, so let's walk through some basic spray maintenance here. All right, everybody, so like I said, original gun for this thing too. I want my people out in the field producing. I don't necessarily need to have them know the ins and outs of this. When they learn the craft, when they've progressed to the point where you know they really don't have a lot of questions left with the actual application, then it's a point where we can start digging into stuff like this. So these guns, uh, Again, the original gun that came with this thing. I like this thing. Doesn't have a filter on it. That's probably the only downside here. Basic sprayer cleaning on the job site in the field is basically, you know, get get the old stuff out. There's there's two systems that I teach my people about. There's the system that gets the paint into the sprayer, and there's the line that actually gets it from the sprayer to the to the end of the gun. Here. And number one, you clean out whatever is in the can to the sprayer. Get that clean enough. You don't have to get it crystal clean because you're going to be running a bunch through it, but clean enough. Then you clean out your line here, the line in your gun, basic stuff like that. You want to get the bulk of the paint out, bulk of the chunks out. Once it's clear slash milky, uh, give or take, then you pop this sucker off. So again, this is probably not going to be applicable to a lot of new sprayers. This is an ancient, ancient sprayer with an ancient, ancient filter system in here like this. Uh, this is a 60 mesh right here in this one. This is the original filter that came with this thing. Uh, built insanely well. Uh, it takes about three or four minutes to clean this sucker out every time. It's got awesome, sturdy stainless steel mesh. And the secret is just getting all the paint off from the inside. So it's uh, shaking it like that, taking it out, shaking it again, um, using a parts cleaner or something to get all that in there. Um, so in the field, you have that filter here. And then normally you would have a filter here, but this is a very, very simple machine and there's no filter in the gun. But basically, when you, when you clean out your line, uh, your input, you clean out your output, you clean this filter, you clean this filter, you run about another quart or, uh, or a half gallon of thinner through it and it's almost clear at that point if you've done your job well. At that point, you take off the tip in the guard, you take this guy out of the thinner and you just leave it like that. And that is a perfectly winterized slashed sort of maintain sprayer that you can go from field job to field job like that. The thinner will keep it from freezing, especially here in Minnesota. The thinner will actually loop this stuff up too. I've used everything, uh, all the manufacturers, there's the pump armors, there's the pump guards, there's, uh, I, I've even used to use antifreeze with water, but again, it's something else you have to have. We have paint thinner here. Now, midwinter, what I normally like to do, especially with some of my beloved old machines like this, is the quick two hour breakdown where I get a, uh, we can use this one for example. A series of just baking trays, things like this. Uh, I fill it up with a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, if you really want to get after it, uh, xylene or xylol, uh, that's a very, very hot solvent. Obviously, you want, uh, you want protective gear, gloves, and all that good stuff. 
you fill that with that, and then basically you take everything off. And I, I like to start from the gun. You take the gun apart, I take everything out of there, take the packings out, take this all apart, lay it in there. And five or 10 minutes later, all the paints is all. You kind of just use a wire brush to get it all off, clean it all up. Um, one of my favorite tools is tiny, tiny little wire brush like this. Like this guy here. And that will allow you to get into all the little crevices where paint actually hides. Uh, all the little pieces inside the gun here so that everything operates smoothly and I work myself backwards so this one actually had a whip on it so this is a very flexible end for your hose so that the hose uh, and the gun is more manipul manipulatable and I uh, take that thing off coil that up soak that too we blew all the stuff out of that uh, take the uh, hose off if the hose is good uh, you can just make sure you you know clean it and reuse it um, probably once a year we, we replace all the hoses on our fleet because hoses are really cheap and if something ever was to burst or go wrong, it's always gonna be with a hose, especially when people maybe set a ladder on it, you know, maybe step on it a little bit, it's got a kink. If anything goes wrong with one of these things, it's, or, or paint's gonna blow up, it's usually gonna be from a hose. So cheap insurance, once a year, give or take, we just get rid of them, safety reasons too. I mean, I know there's a, a stated interval that you should do, but honestly, once or twice a year, we just get out there and, and replace them all. So uh, we take the uh, filter housing out complete, just start taking, fill, uh, uh, taking uh, little uh, uh, couplers off and we just start soaking them and then you go for the, the bottom end here take everything off you can and you don't need a whole bunch of special tools I just have a series of uh, adjustable wrenches like this uh, we got a little plumber's wrench right here painters tool for scraping any thick paint off so that the MEK or the uh, xylene can get in there wire brush obviously I like the stainless steel ones and then my little guy you just take something off soak it clean it brush it off put it back and you just all in reverse then, lay it on in a nice clean rag, put it all back together. You would be amazed at how simple that this is. So there's kind of three stages of maintenance that I perform for sprayers. Number one is field maintenance, clean it. That's all you're doing is just making sure everything's clean, everything's working. You just don't want paint to build up anywhere in it. Number two is the quick take stuff off, clean it up, put it back on. And the third then is take stuff off, clean it up, but then also get all new packings and soft parts and perishable parts for it and then do that. You don't need to do that all the time. So this is just a quick, just a quick clean today. I spent a couple hours on it like this. Um, I noticed that there's a couple of replacement parts that we need. So this, uh, this sprayer probably two or three times in its life, it's had the hoses replaced. And I noticed that the flow from the siphon here that uh, brings paint or coatings in and through here, it was, it was almost restricted, like there was a bunch of plaque. So what I did was uh, I cut open the, the sprayer hose like this, right from here, disconnected this, and you can see it was just like an old uh, artery uh, full of plaque and stuff like that. It was really constricted. So that told me we're just going to take this down to the hardware store, we're going to get new stuff like this, disconnect it here, uh, attach a new hose to it, and have a nice, you know, new siphon hose, new rock catcher on the end of that. And then the return siphon like this, so you know the paint comes in here, and then if you want to cycle it through your can, we have one of these two, and this one is... Uh, uh, this is one of the things I noticed that young apprentices don't do well is that sometimes they'll leave this in a can, they'll take it out of the can, and then they'll just leave a dangle there. And that's what you get. You get a little plugged up bit of paint. And this is the stuff that kills you in the field because you go to prime this thing and get paint through it, and you can't get any paint through it because this thing's clogged. And all of a sudden you're stopping, you're calling your boss, you're calling your production manager, uh, somebody else, when really if we just would have cleaned it well, wouldn't have happened in the first place. So this is not a big deal at all. There's just a little uh, brass fitting right down here. Um, you get a new length of hose, two bucks later, you're on your road. This is not a big deal. And it's just sort of what we have to deal with in a, uh, in a training sort of company like this too. So you can see all that built up old oil primer on that stuff. So yeah, that's basically how we go about it. Uh, soak these hoses, try to clean them up. If they're still usable, we'll use those. If not, we'll get new ones like that. All right, so that's about it. Uh, let's see if we got any other comments, questions here. Da, 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 da. Eric Douglas, John. Ah, here we go. David Evans, Graco 395 is my oil pump, Titan 440 for daily, Titan 3500 on wheels for exteriors, had to put a new inlet hose on the Graco once, yeah. And there's some really fun stuff coming out. I know Graco's got a new one coming out. It's, uh, I don't know how much they've been public with it. Um, but we've done some video shooting for it and uh, there's a really cool sort of new, not a, not a fancier version of this or an updated version of this, a simpler version and something that's uh, sort of a new method 
of pumping paint. So uh, uh, I won't uh, I won't step on uh, on Titan, but uh, that'll be coming soon, and we're gonna get some in the shop here. Brian Martin, Corey Leister, thanks for watching. Creston Girth. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Happy uh, Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, all of this. Uh, happy New Year next week. Uh, the next Ask a Painter will be after that. But if you guys have any topics or suggestions for the first Ask a Painter of 2020, let me know. Otherwise, uh, I'm off on family time now, uh, as I will be the rest of the weekend. And uh, yeah, everybody else, thank you so much for this. It's been an awesome year. Uh, I hope to see a lot of you at the uh, coming events. We have a whole bunch of uh, events that Sherwin's sending me on, uh, the PCA, the Paint Contractors Association, also underwriter of this show. Uh, I'll be at the National Expo, and we're gonna be talking about uh, the apprenticeship and, uh, and how, to, uh, how to find good people, how to run a profitable business, uh, all that good stuff like that. So, all right, everybody, have a good uh, weekend, and we'll talk to you next week.